Hello again, everybody. So we're going to illustrate the principle of segregation in this screencast. We're going to talk about and illustrate the structure and function of Punnett squares. We're going to talk about a dihypercross um, and in which you're following the inheritance of two traits and how important the principle of independent assortment is in following those two traits and the chromosome theory of inheritance. Remember that the principle of segregation states that the alleles of each gene separate so that each egg or sperm cell receives only one of them. This is particularly evident if you think about how it is that this F1 individual who is heterozygous, um, who is heterozygous, who has a genotype that is heterozygous, but is, um, has a phenotype that is purple, in understanding how it is that this organism produces gametes, okay? Here's the, um, a cell in the G1 phase of the cell cycle for this individual. If the cell undergoes meiosis to produce gametes, half of those um, cells will contain the purple allele and half of those cells will contain the white allele, okay? Since you are allowing these individuals to self-fertilize to produce the F2 generation, okay, that means that both the sperm cells and the egg cells will undergo meiosis the same way such that half of the sperm cells will possess the big P allele, here's the half, half of the sperm cells will possess the little P allele or white allele, half of the egg cells will possess the big P allele or purple allele, and half of the egg cells will possess the little P allele or the white flowered allele. Okay, if this sperm cell fertilizes this egg cell, it results in individuals who are homozygous dominant. If this sperm cell fertilizes this egg cell, it results in individuals that are heterozygous. If the sperm cell fertilizes this egg cell, these, all these individuals will be heterozygous. If this sperm cell fertilizes this egg cell, then all of the individuals will be homozygous recessive. Okay, and so this is basically what, what you're doing when you're setting up a Punnett square is you're determining what are the statistical probabilities that the sperm cells will have particular genotypes, what are the statistical probabilities that the egg cells will have particular genotypes, and what are the statistical probabilities um, of the uh, potential zygotes and in individuals produced from the fertilization of those sperm cells with those egg cells. And what you see here is that a quarter of the individuals will be homozygous dominant, two quarters or half will be heterozygous but dominant, and one quarter will be homozygous recessive. So you get in the F1, F2 generation that three to one phenotypic ratio. Okay, and literally one quarter is one half times one half equals one quarter. Okay, so in a Punnett square, it's gametes on either side of the Punnett square, and then the resulting fertilization events and potential offspring when this sperm cell fertilizes this egg cell. That's all that you're showing when you're showing a Punnett square. You're showing what are the possible gametes because of meiosis, and what happens if one of those gametes fertilizes another gamete over here, what happens when this sperm cell fertilizes this egg cell, okay? And the phenotypic ratio resulting from the cell fertilization of those F1 individuals to produce the F2 generation is 3 to 1. The genotypic ratio, however, is 1 to 2 to 1. One quarter homozygous dominant, two quarters or one half heterozygous, and one quarter homozygous recessive. So you get phenotypic and genotypic ratios of offspring um, in this resulting F2, uh, excuse me, in the resulting cell fertilizations, the resulting F2 generation from self fertilization of F1 individuals. So those are the, I've sort of illustrated the basic principles of producing a Punnett square. Make sure you know these rules if it's been a while since you've done Punnett squares and make sure you are very familiar with the vocabulary that I've been using in this screencast. And I've used all of these different, uh, all of these different words in describing what, was, what has been going on in each of these crosses. And make sure you can apply these terms to an example. It's very important for you to understand gamete formation. If you don't understand what gametes are produced by an individual, you cannot do a Punnett square. Okay, so I want you to practice figuring out how many and what gametes would the following individuals produce? 
I want you to do a Punnett square depicting the crossing of a homozygous dominant individual with yellow seeds and a heterozygous dominant individual with yellow seeds and bring that to class on Thursday. And then I want you to try to tackle this more difficult problem. Um, try to work on this on your own and then when you come to class on Thursday, I'll let you work together for a few minutes to, to talk about what your answers were and then we'll talk about it as a group. Okay. One of the things that's um, important in, um, in Mendelian genetics is trying to figure out what genotypes individuals are. So if you see um, a green pea, a green seeded pea plant, green seeds are recessive. The allele for green seeds is a, is a recessive allele. Um, the corresponding allele is the yellow seeded allele, which is a dominant allele. So if you look at a green seeded pea plant, you know that its genotype is homozygous recessive, or in this case, two little y's, okay, because y is dominant. If you see a yellow seeded pea plant what it, and try to figure out what its genotype is, you don't really know. That individual could be homozygous dominant or that individual can be heterozygous. Okay? And there's a great way to figure out the genotype of an individual that um, uh, expresses the dominant phenotype. Okay? And that is, is to take that individual and cross it with an individual whose genotype you absolutely know. Okay. So if you take this individual and you cross it with an individual that's homozygous recessive, if, the individual is homo if this individual is homozygous dominant, the resulting offspring will all be yellow seeded plants. If the individual is heterozygous, half of the offspring will be green and half of the offspring will be yellow. So make sure you understand how it is that you can use a test cross to determine the genotype for an individual expressing the dominant phenotype. And try to work on this problem. Again, bring it to class with you. I do want to talk about dihybrid crosses. Dihybrid crosses are crosses in which you follow the inheritance of two traits um, in individuals. In other words, you would follow the inheritance. So if you took a true breeding female parent, that had wrinkled seeds that were green and you crossed it with a true breeding male parent that had round seeds that were yellow, what would be the resulting um, genotypes and phenotypes in the F2 generation and also in the F1 generation? And um, in determining what the trick here is to make sure that you understand what are the possible gametes produced by these individuals. Okay. You should be able to take an, this individual here based upon what we've talked about with these monohybrid crosses and determine that all of the gametes would possess the a dominant allele for seed shape and the dominant allele for seed color. And that all of these individuals through meiosis would produce um, gametes that have the recessive allele for seed shape and the recessive allele for seed color. When these organisms were crop, when these gametes were allowed to fertilize one another, or when this male gamete was allowed to fertilize this egg cell, the re only resulting progeny are individuals that are heterozygous dominant. And then you have to, by thinking about meiosis, if these organisms were allowed to self-fertilize, what are the possible gametes that they would produce? And these are the possible gametes. And then you complete the Punnett square just as you did with a monohybrid cross. This, this sperm cell fertilizing this egg cell, this sperm cell fertilizing this egg cell. So you functionally do the Punnett square the same way, but you, this is the tricky part. What are the possible gametes? And this is going to take you back to meiosis and independent assortment. Remember, any individual that is heterozygous, dominant, as this, these individuals are, when they undergo meiosis to produce gametes, there are four different possible gamete genotypes. And it is because of independent assortment, the fact that these chromosomes can line up in different ways during metaphase one of meiosis, that these four uh, gamete genotypes are possible. Okay, And you should understand this because we've done this as a group on the board 
Um, and we've done this, you guys did this in the laboratory on meiosis. Okay, so when you set up the gametes here, we know that if we take the cell through meiosis, that the statistical possibilities are that one quarter of the gametes will have big R, big Y, one quarter will have little r, little y, one quarter will have big R, little y, and one quarter will have little r, big y. So when you set up the crosses, this is what the gametes will look like um, that are on either side of the Punnett square. And what you get if you allow these, um, these sperm cells to fertilize each of these egg cells is you get what is a, a phenotypic ratio of 9, 3, 3 to 1 okay, in the resulting um, offspring. 9 yellow round, 3 green round, 3 um, yellow wrinkled, and 1 wrinkled green. Okay, and you should be able to depict this. If independent assortment did not occur, in other words, if these two genes, the gene for seed shape and seed color, were linked onto the same chromosome, the results of the cross would be very different. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in class on um, Thursday. If you have a homozygous, excuse me, if you have a phenotypically dominant individual, and you don't know its genotype, but you want to figure it out, you would use a test cross with a homozygous recessive parent to determine the um, genotype of this parent. In other words, if this parent were homozygous dominant and you crossed it with this, this homozygous recessive parent, you would get all heterozygous individuals. If this individual were heterozygous dominant, okay, then the results would be very different. You get one quarter uh, heterozygous dominant, one quarter homozygous, um, uh, excuse me, heterozygous dominant for seed shape and homozygous recessive for seed color, one quarter homozygous recessive for seed shape, heterozygous for seed color, and one quarter homozygous recessive for seed shape, homozygous recessive for seed color. So if the resulting progeny look like this, then this is what this, the genotype of this parent. If all the resulting progeny look like this, then this is the genotype of this parent. Okay, so it's very, very similar. I want you to work on these problems. Because, as I mentioned, gamete formation is so important here, I want you to determine what gametes, now listen, you're not crossing any of these individuals right now. All you're doing is saying, what are the gametes produced by this individual? What are the gametes produced by this individual? What are the gametes produced by this individual? So forth and so on. And it's you it, practicing this will help you with Mendelian genetics um, uh, problems that you're going to get. I also want you to do for Thursday depict um, uh, show a Punnett square where you cross individuals with these genotypes. I want you to try this test cross problem, okay? But an individual, um, but that you would be um, crossing um, individuals from these, this particular question. Okay, so it says question three, but I'm just gonna say from the previous question. Okay, so perform a test cross Pretend that you don't know the uh, genotype of the phenotypically dominant individual. How would you do a test cross to determine what the genotype is of that phenotypically dominant individual? And try this problem, which is a little bit more challenging. Okay? Work on these, come to class on Thursday, and we'll work through them um, as tables and then together. Okay? Practice, guys. Read and email me with questions. Take care. Bye.